Piezo Shock Show, episode number 34. And today I'm going to continue uh, this uh, series and talking about uh, oscillator drive circuits. So we talked about H-Bridge, we talked about um, kind of the op-amp style uh, amplifiers that exist to drive ultrasonic transducers. Uh, today we'll get into details about what are the pros and cons of using an oscillator, an oscillating circuit or oscillator cir driving circuit to drive ultrasonic transducers. And I'll mention here, uh, I don't have as much experience with these, dealing with these type of circuits as uh, the bridge driving circuits or the op amp style uh, one. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to focus on giving what I do know, what can be uh, differences um, and maybe in some, which applications might this be a more preferred circuit uh, to use a driving method than uh, the other two mentioned in the last two videos. So we'll get into that. So let's just look at a couple differences on the oscillator drive circuit. Usually when you're talking about driving, you know, a crystal oscillator circuit, you are using your crystal to uh, determine uh, the frequency. For example, with a quartz crystal, using that to determine the frequency of your, uh, you know, for your microcontroller, for example. But in this case, we're actually using, we're actually driving the crystal. So that presents uh, a different topologies uh, that would be necessary for that. Um, so let's see. So there's also no digital control. Rather, there's feedback for the um, you know for the transistors that are used. There's actually feedback feedback paths through inductors or and transformers, um, uh, different tapping uh, schemes as well. Uh, so there is a digital control. So pretty much you you supply the DC voltage, um, and out comes your oscillating uh, voltage to your transducer. So it's very simple in that way. Um, it does provide less knobs to turn, and, uh, you know, perchance less things to go wrong. Um, so it's actually seeming quite attractive at this point. So let's keep talking about it. So usually they use about uh, usually two or four tran uh, transistors. Um, oftentimes they're BJT. Um, they can also be MOSFETs uh, as well. So there is a sinusoidal output um, and obviously, in order to provide a sinusoidal output, then there needs to be uh, different biasing kind of schemes on those trans transistors in general in order to get, you know, uh, a, you know, amplified output in a oscillating format. Um, therefore, um, there are going to be inefficiencies in the, in the circuit. So there'll be a significant amount of heat dissipated on those transistors. So that's something just to keep in mind there. So the next part that we're going to talk about is there's a lack of fine control. So with the op amp and also the uh, bridge drive circuits, you have control. You have direct control over frequency. Uh, you can you you can easily integrate. Um, you can easily integrate measurements into how you control your frequency, or in the case of the op amp sound circuit, also the amplitude. Uh, however, in this type, it doesn't lend itself very well to control those parameters. And there's many topologies for this, but what I've found that to be most commonly implemented is what's called the Royer oscillator. So you can go ahead and take a look at that. I won't be describing it in this video. So the oscillator circuit, uh, the drive circuit works at a steady state um, behavior. So it's not very good for transient mode operation. So if you have an ultrasonic transducer um, that has a more complex drive, drive scheme, like it's on for 10 cycles, off for 10 cycles, um, or it's only on for a very short amount of time, well, it takes a significant amount of time for um, you know, up, you know, upwards of tens of milliseconds and upwards uh, for this uh, oscillator to start operating uh, in its steady state operation. So that could be that's very critical in some applications that you need to have your full voltage as soon as you pre you know hit the go button. Um, so it all yeah, like I mentioned before, also the, the transistors will dissipate a significant amount of uh, amount of heat or, or power uh, due to the way it's being applied. So there'll be you know you'll see big heat sinks and fans, and it's not really a problem. It can be a problem for cases where heat is an issue or where you are battery powered. That's going to be an inefficient uh, drive circuit to to work with. One really good thing about the oscillator drive circuit, in addition to being simple in terms of number of components, 
it is also very good at high frequencies. Uh, that's unlike uh, op amp drive circuits, which the high voltage ones um, struggle at high frequencies. They're more of a very niche item. Um, these um, these these sort of drive circuits, the oscillator ones, can uh, often are used for higher frequency devices that are operating under a constant load. So there's not a lot of dynamic instability. It's very consistent dynamically. But if you do have a, an application where you have dynamic instability, you will also have a lot of electrical instabilities. So I can present to you here two cases. One where you configure your oscillator such that it has a uh, oscillation frequency independent of that of the transducer. Now you kind of lose in this case that when your transducer has a higher load of frequency shift power and then that therefore power kind of dissipated or power delivered to the transducer will also end up changing based on the resonant frequency shifts. Or if you have your oscillator uh, very much coupled to your transducer frequency, in that case, um, you will have you when the when the um, loading is uh, very unstable. That means the impedances will also be unstable. Therefore, you you'll also struggle with the electrical side and causing those transients. Um, so, if you're looking for fine control and you'd want to be looking at the the first two circuits I I, I described, uh, most commonly um, used. Uh, and in many of the devices are the op amp style, but it really depends on your application uh, as to what you're using. You know, for example, surgical, many surgical uh, transducers operating lower than 100 kilohertz use this uh, op amp style uh, drive circuitry, um, just as well as, you know, many other uh, devices um, included. Uh, but for you know, for example, high volume, uh, cheap devices, you're going to find oscillator circuits. For example, if you look, if you go and purchase a very cheap ultrasonic cleaner, you're going to find an ultrasonic, you know, an oscillating drive circuit. It's all, you know, all the all the circuits that are um, kind of marketed uh, for ultrasonic cleaners. Most of them, like you know, the ones that you can you can you know quickly and readily attain, those are oscillator circuits. So the last thing I want to mention here is there's a high susceptibility. Um, it's highly susceptible to spurious modes. That there were many modes. If if your transducer has complex geometry, um, and there are many modes present, uh, then you can actually, if you if 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 your frequency is transducer dependent, you can actually end up locking onto different modes uh, or or oscillating in, in different modes of that. Uh, transducer, so that can be a, that can be obviously problematic because now your transducer is not operating in its correct format, um, not according to specification, obviously at that point. And um, many actually devices require certain shapes, geometry based on the constraints, which do which do require. Um, they don't require the spurious modes, but they come because of those constraints, because of the shape, um, the the length, uh, the different aspects. Um, uh, of that transducer. So that's why for most um, higher performance transducers, um, oscillator circuits aren't used. Um, it's either the H bridge or, or, or the, the bridge circuitry, or it's going to be the um, op amp style amplifier, you know, whether it's uh, discrete components or if it's a uh, kind of consolidated chip. Um, in that case, um, an op amp or amplifier style circuit is used. All right, so you've been watching the 34th episode of the Piezo Talk Show, your host, Dr. Shikani. I hope to be discussing oscillator circuits in general. You know, I'm personally not satisfied with, with, uh, with the completeness of the discussion today, uh, but hopefully we'll, uh, you know, down the line, we'll, I'll provide some more information on oscillator circuits um, uh, and kind of exposing their workings and also kind of highlighting some of the cons that I mentioned, like the instabilities or the susceptibility to spurious modes. Those are some things I'm interested in exploring and hopefully demonstrating to you. Uh, so stay tuned for those videos um, tomorrow or, or on Monday. Uh, coming up on the 35th episode is going to be discussion of sine wave versus squirrel wave. And that would be obviously the square wave is, is coming from your bridge driver and your sine wave is coming either from the oscillator circuit, uh, but uh, I'll be more closely referring it to the op amp circuit, which is the one which is used more in the high performance um, uh, kind of uh, devices. 
So look forward to seeing you then. Please check out the links for uh, the presentation notes I showed today. Also a link to sign up for to receive the updates for these videos in your email, as well as a link to my consulting services and, and fees for ultrasonic transducer uh, uh, product development consulting. All right, see you next time.